Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belonging to my Lord and Saviour, His name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Wahavaka Kodash. That's the name of the Heavenly Father, and His Son is Yahabashai, who we reverence and double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Okay, that teaches truth well, and that continue to teach us truth well. And to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe. Okay, one thing I want to touch on is Yahweh Shai. One thing I want to touch on is Yahweh Shai. Because you still, again, we're going to flow with the spirit. You still got a lot of men. They're out there, but they're not really teaching you. You have a shy. You know, you got men teaching in the evil spirit. They're not really coming in the spirit of Yahweh shy. They're coming in another spirit. They're coming in the spirit of the world. What was Yahweh shy? What was he like when he came on the earth? Was he seeking the high seats? Was he, was he seeking validation from the world? Was he seeking to be loved by the world? These are important questions that need to be answered. So we're going to answer these questions, Lord willing, by the spirit and power of Yahabai Sham Yahabashai. So now let's go, we're going to go straight to Isaiah 53. Surely, let's start at Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men. So who was despised and rejected when he came upon this earth? Yahweh Shai. Despised and rejected. So if you're an ambassador for Yahweh Shai, you're going to be walking in that same stead. And this was he was rejected of his own. Rejected of men. A man of sorrow. So Yahweh, he had many sorrows. Many. He had emotions, but he put that aside for the ministry. So he's a man of many, many sorrows, many griefs. Of course he was in sorrow, he had to deal with what the transgression, the whole sins of Israel was upon Yahweh Shai. And he had to deal with them wicked Pharisees as well, constantly. So he's a man of many sorrows and having to um, go through that crucifixion. You can, can you imagine what was going through his head? And acquainted with grief. Associate, acquainted means strength with grief. He had much grief. And the scripture says with much knowledge, with much wisdom comes much grief. So it's going to be the same today. Okay? The same thing. With his men. The more you increase in the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of Yahweh Shai, the more you're grieved, the more you don't want to really be around people, the more you're isolated. This is how it is. The path of a prophet, it's not, it's not an easy path. And he hid as we hid as it was our faces from him. So that's what our people done. Our people hid what their face from the Abba Shai.
he was despised and we esteemed him not. See, Habashah, what he was despised. He didn't say he was loved by the majority of his people. So if he was despised, that means what he was stuck in hell. He wasn't, he wasn't leaving the Vida Loka. He was going through tribulation. But men are teaching you something else in this truth. Men are teaching this truth in a worldly, in a worldly manner. When the scripture says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So who's right? Yahabashai or a worldly individual that claims to be in the truth? Surely he had borne our griefs, brought it upon us. It's so like he brought it upon him. He carried the griefs and sorrows of Israel. That's why Yahushua was feeling so low in his spirit at times. And carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the Most High. So it's a stricken and smitten of the Most High. We did esteem him. And none of us can really complain too much because we're not really going through what Yahabashah is going through. Okay? And this is the true image of Yahabashah. This is his true image. A dark skinned man. White woolly hair. Okay? And he was from the tribe of Judah. Okay? This is the true image of Yahweh Shai, according to Revel Revelations 1 and 10. He never looked like no cracker. He was a dark skinned man from the tribe of Judah. Today he'd be known as a so called Negro. Alright? Yeah. Alright. That's the true image of who people call Jesus. And he died for what? The sins of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Indianos. And our people are ungrateful. If only our people knew. If only our people knew who their saviour was. and afflicted and he was physically beaten as well by our own people they beat him they put a crown of thorns on his head they have to pay for that they have to pay for that but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities so it's letting you know why he was bruised. Why he went through what he went through. For our transgressions. Not everybody, for the transgressions of Israel. And what is transgression? Bear me just a minute. Let's go to John. Let's see if I can find it. Bear me just a minute. Wallace transgression. This is first John three and let's start at three. And every man that have his hope in him purify of himself, even as he is pure. You have a shade he's pure. Alright. Whoever committed sin. Alright. Transgressive also the law. It says whoever committed sin, transgressive the law. Whoever. Alright? So that's what sin is. 
a breaking of the law. So we both breaking the law. What does that bring forth death? So we would need an intercessor. All right. For sin is the transgression of the law. So that's what sin is. Sin is a breaking of the law. So when you sin, that's why we die. Okay. That's why we need an intercessor for our sins. If we didn't have an intercessor, we'd be through, we'd be finished. There'd be no redemption. We'd just be going off, going into captivity, going off, going into captivity. It'd be a vicious cycle. But through Yahabashai, guess what? We have a kingdom under Yahabashai. That's been promised to us. An everlasting kingdom. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be, without your Habashai, that would not be. But you have men that are pushing their own righteousness. Which we know, yeah, the law is righteousness. If you can keep it to the best of your ability, you're in esteem this righteousness. But you've got men that are putting the law before your Habashai. And they're doing that because they're gloating in their own self-righteousness, piety. When Yahawashai trumps the law, Yahawashai is the law. You understand? But a lot of men don't understand that. Even a lot of men that have been in the truth for years. You've got men that call themselves elders. Elders. They don't even realize that. What the law could not do for it was weak in the flesh. For we were weak in the flesh. So if we could not submit to the law because we were weak in the flesh, who we need to get us out of that condition? Yahweh Shai. The sooner you realize that, the more you understand the truth and you won't bug yourself out when it comes to the law. So that's what sin is. Verse five, and you know that he was manifested on the scene to take away our sins and to experience what we go through in the flesh okay but to take away our sins and the only way your sins are taken away is through your belief in Yahweh Shai that's the only how your sins are taken away through your belief in Yahweh Shai if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai your sins are going to be imputed unto you simple that's why Yahusha said you shall die in your sins. And in him is not bare just a minute. And in him is no sin. There's no sin in Yahusha, no sin. Because he's perfect. Because he is perfect, there's no sin in him. And that's, that's, that's a whole load of, um, what's the word? Character. To be in the earth and not go off. Yahabashai 444, Yahabai Shemel To be on the earth and not go off once man can you imagine that not to go off once in your lifetime that's 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 something else and that's what we're going to experience in the kingdom but you've got men in the truth that act like they've never went off it's amazing it's amazing There's a scripture on that. He that say he has no sin, you make you make your Hawashai a liar. You make his sacrifice null and void. If you're just relying on the law itself, you're making your Hawashai sacrifice null and void. That's what you're doing. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. And that's why we need Yahweh Shai because 
I could be teaching now and I could go off in the next hour, the next minute. That's why we need you, Howard Shy. Man is fickle, I'm fickle. But we're mighty through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. Understand the sacrifice. Not the sacrifice of pigeons, turtle doves. Understand the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. Okay. So we're done with that. So back to Isaiah 53. Okay. Back on Isaiah 53, and let's jump straight to 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. See, I was shy, he was wounded, badly wounded on the head, on the body, passed through for our transgressions, for the transgressions of Israel. And what is transgression? Sin. And he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Through Yahweh's stripes, what stripes? Beatings, as they say, what did they say? Cat and nine tails. We are healed for his stripes. That's who we're healed by, Yahweh who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. He's a dark skinned man. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all gone astray. We've all gone astray. That's why it says, seeing you be returned, seeking ten times more. So knowing that we went astray, you'd want to seek Yahweh ten times more. Double. We can never do enough. You're only as good as your last effort. That's the mentality you've got to have in this truth. It doesn't matter how many videos I do. You're only as good as your last, last effort. You speak about 10, five years ago. It's about what you're doing today. All right? The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, his beatings, we are healed. All right? All we like sheep have gone astray. You have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord Jehovah shall have laid on him. So lucky the Lord Jehovah have laid on him. The iniquity of us all. So that was laid upon Yahweh Shai. The iniquity of the children of Israel. So do you wonder why he was feeling all these emotions? Because he was weighed down. He was weighed down in the spirit. That's why. All the transgression of the sins of Israel was upon Yahweh Shai. That's why he says, power, power, I forgot what it is. Have you forsaken me? Because it felt like he was forsaken at that time. At that particular time, he felt forsaken. Why? Because the sins and sins make you unpure. So for that moment of time, what was Yahweh said? I'm pure. And it says the Heavenly Father, he's too um, righteous to behold evil, sin. So that's why he says, I've, have I been forsaken? But the Heavenly Father was always with Yahweh Shai. Just like Yahweh Shai, Father, he's always with us. And you have to believe in that. We have to believe in that. Stop, walk, stop walking around without any faith. When you walk about, keep your head, keep your chin up. Not in a proud way, but keep your chin up. Knowing that Yahweh Shah is with you. Walk in confidence. Walk in faith. Walk in that belief. Walk in that trust. That whatever you're going through, Yahweh Shah is able to get you through that other side. Okay?
And all we, all we have got to straighten and turn everyone to his own way. Okay? And the Lord Yahweh have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. Scripture is saying he was oppressed. Just like we are oppressed. Oh, what? Under the Roman Empire. Because when Yahweh was on the scene, what was it? Under the Roman Empire. It doesn't say Yahweh was the king of the Roman Empire. He was the king of the Jews. He was a king. But we were still in bondage. When you have it, you do know when Yahabashah was on the scene, that was in the time of the Romans. The Romans were ruling. That's why it was known as what the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Alright? He was afflicted and yet opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Lamb is silent. When you slaughter lambs, they're very silent. It's goats that are loud. <laughs> okay. And as a sheep before his shepherd is dumb. Okay. That's how the Hamashai was. Okay. As a sheep before the slaughter. And he opened up his mouth. That means he was a he was obedient. Okay. The Hamashai was obedient unto the death. Okay. He wasn't trying to do things his own way. Okay. He wasn't trying to do things his own way. And you have that in this truth as well. Men trying to do things their way. They're not really teaching you how to shine. And if they do, it's very hardly. to Isaiah 53 all right Isaiah 53 and as the sheep is before he shares his dumb so he opened up his mouth just suffered it great 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 integrity which is not the easiest thing because the flesh always wants to do something else. But it was that integrity that he had that kept him under that obedience. This is what men should be teaching you. All the other stuff, vocab, Malone, all those distractions. All right, we defend the gospel, but all right, vocab, Malone, you speak on it here and there, but is that the premise of Yo, that's not a foundation. He's a stuff, he's a demon. He's set up as an agent to keep you distracted. When we could be speaking about more important things. The more important matters. Go to um, a lot of good stuff right here. Bear me just a minute. Tell you how to walk in this truth. Scriptures tell you how to walk. Yahweh was showing you. Let's go to Luke 14. Okay. We're going to go to Luke 14. Yahweh was telling you how to move on this earth. Alright? 
He was telling you how to move. But men, they're not moving in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Okay? They're moving in the spirit of this world, which is contrary to Yahweh Shai. All right? Let's go to Luke 14 and straight to 7. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden. Okay. When you're bidden, it's to what? To a, it could be to a wedding. It could be to a party. But when you're bidden, that was I was telling you how to move. Bidding means caught, caught, invited. That like when someone is at a, a, a wedding and you're invited, someone might say a card. You invited, come this time. All right. He put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out chief rooms, saying unto them, So you have a shine. You had those that were setting up. Uh, 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 um, what's it? What's it? What's it? A party or a gathering? And you know when you set up the rooms in the diner, Yahushai was seeing how they were doing things, how they were operating. When not are bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room. So this is wedding, so that was, that was what was being prepared, a wedding. Okay, which is what ceremonial. Sit not down in the highest room. So you're not supposed to be sitting down in the highest, it tells you, sit not down in the highest room. Go into the room with less chairs the less tables, less decorations. Less the more honorable man and they'll be bidden of him. Less the more honorable man that's been set up in that position by Yahabashai, six times going to tell you. And he bade thee and come and say to thee, give this man place and now begin with shame to take the lowest room. So you be told to get up out of that position and sit in the lowest room. When guess what? You could have done it in the first place. You wouldn't need to be told to get out of that room, get out of that chair, if you were in that low seat already. See what I mean? And when you do that, what? It's going to bring you, it's going to bring you a bit of shame. Because you should have already been in that low seat. Okay? And he bade, and he that bade thee, him come and say to thee, give this man place. Let him sit down. And now begin with shame to take the lowest room, so you're going to be shame. All right. But when not our bidding, go sit down in the lowest room that when he had bid, bid bade thee, come if he may, say unto thee, friend, go up higher, when thou shalt have worship in the presence of Rem that sit at meat with thee. That's when you be told what? To go into that high seat. Someone else will tell you to do that. You're not, you're not, you're not bringing it upon yourself to sit in that high seat. And this, the psychology of it, why would you sit in that high seat anyway? Why would you sit in that high seat? Because you think you belong in that high seat. When you don't. So it's all, it's all spiritual. If I always take the low seat. Let's go to verse 11. For whosoever shall exalt himself, like them wicked Pharisees, they were exalting themselves. Alright? Mind you, it says whoever. 
Shall exalt himself. Shall be abased. Okay. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So it's, it's very self-explanatory. You exalt yourself, you're going to be abased. You abase yourself, you're going to be exalted in due time. Okay. But that's all up to you, how shy. Let me see if I can... Nah, that's all down to your have a shy. Okay. Whether you're a base or not. That's the up, that's, that's, that's the up to you. Okay. It's up to your have a shy. If he wants to increase you, he's going to increase you. If he don't want to increase you, he ain't going to increase you. Okay. But why are you seeking that anyway? You should just be happy that you may be of the hopeful elect. Ain't that enough for you? Ain't that enough? See, that's not enough for men, for, for them to be of the hope. They want more. As long as you're of that hopeful elect, that's all that should matter. Why do you want more? Men, they want the fame and the glory of this world. Be careful what you wish for, because the Lord might grant you that. And a lot of men have that, but guess what? They don't have the spirit now. The spirit's gone right out the back door. The fame, all that. The spirit goes right out the back door. Now you're just an empty vessel standing around. And that's another topic anyway, later on. I may do a video upon that. That's just another, yeah. You've got men, can't even, do, can't even do the work during the week. And for the rest of the week, they're just empty vessels. They come to camp on Saturday, they're just empty vessels. Spirit ain't there. That's your own fault. You ain't got nobody else to blame, except from yourself. Maybe you should have put more time in. Maybe you should have been more dedicated to your house shine. That's you know what, and I might as well touch on this as well, Luke. 14 and 20 Where are you see the big 14 and seventeen and said the servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come all things are now ready. Bidden what? To the marriage. The marriage of Yahweh Shai. Okay. And all day with one consent. Began to make excuse. They were all making excuses. Every one of them, and you've got men in this room, they do the same thing. They make excuses why not, why not to fulfill their lot in Yahweh Shai? Why not to do the work? I'll do it another day. You can't make excuses in this truth. You've got to do the work. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray that he have me excused. So you have men that were put the things of the world before you have a shy. Then they're coming to camp like a dead vessel. Looking bugged out. And the other says I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excuse and you have others that buy cattle and it's also these are all things of the world pray me have me excuse excuse from what from the table from the banquet the moment you remove yourself from your other shy he ain't got he ain't gonna invite you back and you've been invited to the marriage you've been invited to the marriage Verse 20, 
And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Speaking of marriage. So that's a commitment to your woman. A lot of people, they can't even push the truth because they're so committed what? To their woman. Okay? And it's good. The reactions you get out here, it's good. You get all types of different reactions. It's interesting. That's why you've got to be out here. We're going to go into that as well. Lord willing. Why you have to be out on the highways and byways. I looked up the word highway and it's where traffic is passing by. And I looked up the word byways. We're going to get into it. And the byways where people are passing by. So if nobody's passing by, guess what? You're not doing what Yahweh is saying. Men want to do their own thing. Men want to do their own thing. They're not being obedient to the voice of Yahweh Shai. So guess what Yahweh is going to do? If we don't take heed, he's going to warn you. Okay? He's going to remove your Holy Spirit from you. And then he's going to put you to death. If you don't take heed to what the Spirit is saying. Stop, hi stop hiding in the woods. Make sure when you're doing videos, make sure there's a pathway. But if there's not a pathway, guess what? It don't count. And you're doing the work deceitfully. Men want to do things their way. Verse 21, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. When the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets. So the other show, he's angry at this type of behavior. Men that make excuses of why they can't fulfill their role. Well, you should have known, you should have known. You should have known, because the scripture says, count the cost. You should have known what you're a part of. Go out into quickly into the streets. So hold on a minute. Does it say forest? Let's read that again. Go out into quickly into the streets. Where's the streets? These are the streets. So this is where we have to be. It doesn't say go out into the forest. It says go out into the streets. Okay? Not into some forest looking bugged out. Bugged out. Then say then then put the off that is that's a highway. You're doing the work for the Lord Jehovah deceitfully. These are the streets, the corners, where people are passing. Where you're in danger. You're not really in danger in, in, in the forest, are you? And the lanes. So what are the lanes? The lanes are the byways. They're the lanes, okay? The pathways of the city. And you know, it says of the city. This is the city of London. So this is where we're commanded to be. So white men doing this? Because they're in a reprobate mind. Because they're in a reprobate mind. Where was that? Then the master of the house being angry, bear me just a minute. And the ladies, I bring here the poor, the maimed, and whole, and the blind. In other words, the sick. Because that's who we're out here for, the sick. What did Yahweh say? Those that are whole need not a physician, but those that be sick. So that's who we're out here for. We're not here for the perfect, because the perfect, they don't need a savior. They don't think they need a savior. We're out here for what? The poor, the sick, the maimed, those with disabilities. And you've got men doing videos, taking the mick out of men that have disabilities. Which really is Yahabashah, if you have a disability, it's Yahabashah that gave you that disability. But that's a very, very, very dangerous thing to do as well. Especially if it's a brother in his truth. Remember that individual that was um, sick and the disciple said, who sinned? Where his mother was it his father? 
And Yahushua said, no, 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 it was none of them. But the, work, but the works of the Lord Yahushua may be fulfilled, may be shown. So you've got to be really careful what you say about certain men. Okay? Because again, you've got certain men that are out there. They're just out there now, dead vessels, just scoffing, talking shit. The Lord has removed their spirit. Okay? And you know when someone's losing it when they shave their beard off. That's when you know when someone's losing it. Why are you shaving your beard for? Conforming to this world. Okay? You gotta hold on to this truth. But let's continue. One verse 22. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. There's more room. We're bidding you to the marriage. There's more room, there's more seats. Okay. We're bidding you to come in. And the Lord said, the Lord Yahweh said, Okay. Unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. Go out. Go out into the highways and hedges. And compel them to come in. How are we compelling our people? By these words. This is what compels them to come into this world. This is what, what was drawing our people into this world. Okay? Every, every person that walks past, that's an Israelite, you don't need to say, brother, sister, brother, sister, have you got some time? Bro, that's, that's you trying to do your own thing. A lot of men, they want to make their own way. Because you could be saying, brother, sister, help me out. No, 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 it's your show that calls. Call, um, calls. It's not you. It's not you. Because you've got men that do that. Brother, 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 every person that walks past, bugged out. You see how I show that calls. All we gotta do, teach the word, and those that are have ears to hear, they're gonna hear. And they're gonna receive this word. My house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Why? Because they made excuses. They went back out into the world. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, Okay? If any man come to me and hate, not his father, mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yet in his own life also he cannot be my disciple so what does that mean? you got to be spiritual what does that mean? you hate your own life yeah you, you hate your own life but you love your Hawashai more than you love your father more than you love your mother, more than you love your children, more than you love anything else. That's what the point was, to put Yahweh Shai before anything else. A lot of them would read that scripture, they would, they would be in their feelings. Oh, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? Uh, uh, I've got, I, can't, I can't love my family more than Yahweh Yeah, he says it. You can't love your family more than Yahweh Shai. Because if you do, you're not worthy of him. But a lot of men, they're, they're, they're sensual, they're emotional. They can't accept that. And why was this written? Because there's men in the truth that put their children, their mother, their father before the truth. That's why these things are written. It wasn't just written. 
them for any reason. Alright. So you would not be so much attached to these things, the people. So you might have a, a connection, you might be living with your father, with your mother, your daughter, your son. So you wouldn't have that spiritual connection. If they just might have Satan on them. So that's why these things are written. Alright? Verse 27, whoever so doth not bear his cross, the cross is our own personal afflictions, which we have to bear daily. Okay? And come after me cannot be my disciple. You have to follow your Havashai. You can't do that. You can't be your Havashai disciple. You gotta make these steps. You gotta make these steps. You can't be this, you can't be his disciple. Yahweh should have a straight forward, straight to the point. He did not say, well, now nah, maybe, just, no, 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 put the, put, the, put them before, no. So you can't put them before him. This has to be your everything. Your everything, your house has to be your everything. Everything else is, um, what do you call it? Secondary. Family comes secondary. Job, secondary. Your, your little hobbies that you have, secondary. But guess what? If you're a carnal man, you're gonna put the carnal first. And you have a shy secondary because you're carnal. You're carnal. When you're not going to see any profit of the truth. Why? Because now you're not reaping the spiritual things. If you're sowing to the carnal, you think that's what you're going to reap. If you're sowing to the spirit, you have just going to what? Reap unto you what? Sow unto you spiritual things. If you're sowing of the spirit. That's why it says, wherever a man shall sow, that shall he also reap. So if you're reaping the spiritual things, that's what you're going to gain. It's spiritual. Right? And here it is, I never knew this was here. For which of you intending to build a tower, sit if not down first and count up the cost? So when you're building, you've got to count that cost. And it says whether you have sufficient enough to, to build, to continue. Whether you have enough to budget. Whether you have enough. You don't just build, but you don't, you don't have no budget for, for that particular thing you're building. You need a budget. So it's the same in the truth. You need to know what you're getting into. You need to know if you have enough. You don't start something, but you... You don't start something, but you don't finish. Okay? Jesus is never going to plan for. Okay? You have to finish. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Alright? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Matthew 24, what is it? 14. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It's about enduring to the end. Not oh, halfway in. Five years in, two years in, ten years in, to the end shall be saved. So what does it mean to the end? Either you're beamed up in these chariots or death. One of the two. But as long as you're pushing this truth, that's the main thing. Thus happily, after he have laid the foundation, okay, And it's not able to finish it. So you lay a foundation, but you have to finish that foundation. It has to be finished. Okay? And all, be 
behold it and begin to mock him. Rakati ha, rakati ha, shadam, four, 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 four. So if you build and you don't finish, and I've seen this, I've seen many construction sites where the building wasn't finished. And you look at and you look at it and you're like, hold on a minute. He obviously didn't have the funds, or there was something that he was not doing that was not right. And what you mock, you laugh at him. But it's some type of resource he did not have. So it's the same for this truth. Once you build, you've got to finish that building. You can't just stop. You have to make sure you have the, um, enough funds to finish that building. If you don't have the funds, if that building ain't finished, people are going to mock and they're going to laugh. Okay? Saying this man began to build and was not able to what? To finish. So you got to finish. Okay? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Can't stop now. You've got to be inspired. How can you not be inspired? With all the things that are going on. Huh? Or what king going to make war against another king? Okay, you're going to battle. Sit if not down first. Alright. And consult if. Okay, get counsel. Whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that had come against him with 20,000. So you also consult him more. Because if you can't, then you're not going to go. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassador, okay, a messenger, deserve conditions of peace. If you don't have the funds, if you ain't got the funds to go to war, try to settle for what? For peace. Okay? So likewise, whosoever will be of he of you, but for sake of not all that he have, cannot be my disciple. Remember, get carnal when they say that. All he, all he have. That's your life. You've forsaken your life and now you were born again for Yahweh Shai. It doesn't mean everything. It doesn't mean, well, you know, if you give up your house for Yahweh that's good. That shows your level of faith. If you give up your woman or whatever, that's good. That shows your level of faith. But it's not talking about forsaking things as in, oh, give up your car, give up all that, give up everything, don't have a fridge, just make yourself poor. If you do that, that's, that, that's beautiful because that's a high level of faith. But it's not saying to do that. It means to give up your life. You're old man. So you're renewed. Now you're walking in the spirit. Now you can serve you have a shy in the spirit. Okay? Let me check the time out. Yeah, still a bit of time. Hold on a minute. Wi-Fi on. You turn the Wi-Fi off. Yes, yeah, off. Okay. This is about for forsaking our lives. For you have a shine. Making time for you have a shine. Because your time is everything. And you don't want to be in that position. When all hell breaks loose, oh, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have done more videos. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to be in that spirit. Oh, I, I wish I could have done more. You know what I'm saying? Right now is the time. Excuse Right now is that time. To do as much as possible. Alright? So 
So where was I? Where was I? Verse 34, salt is good. Why? Because it's what? It's a preservative. And what? It's seasoned. Okay. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saviour, when shall it be seasoned? And we are like salt, so if you've lost your savour, where shall it shall be, what's it? Seasoned. And that's your spirit. So how do you maintain the spirit? By feeding the word efficiently, studying it and doing what you have to do. But you should already know, if you've been in this truth two, five years, you should already know. You want to be, see, a man that's a winner, he wants to be around winners. So we, 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 that's the spirit we push. We want to be around what? Winners. So that's what this truth is about. Scripture says, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. But if you do these things, you shall never fail. You want to be what? On the winning team. Not, not, not the losing team. Guess what? If you're around that, if you if you if you have a fiery spirit, if you have a fiery spirit and you got men around you that are not in that spirit, every, everyone's got a different spirit. But the men lord, they're gonna be fervent, they're gonna be excited. So if you're around other men that are not in that spirit, 